Hello students, thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome to day one of our second week of distance learning. Our focus this week is going to be theme. Theme, you may remember, is a moral or a lesson in a piece of writing. A moral has to do with what is right or wrong, whereas a lesson is something that is learned or taught. When we want to find the theme, we're going to use text clues to help us figure out the theme. Think about what is the author trying to teach me? Do not confuse a theme with a topic. Remember, topic means the subject that is being written or spoken about. Some examples of theme are be kind to others, friends are important, and don't give up. Where do I find theme? Well, guess what? We have to make sure we're reading a text that is fiction. Fiction is a story that is not real and often includes a theme. Fiction is different from nonfiction because it also has point of view. It can be in first person or third person. We also know that fiction includes characters, setting, and plot and the text structure is sequential. One of the reasons we read is because we can identify with characters in the story and we can know that other people go through experiences similar to ours. These can be called text to world connections. The story we're going to read today is called Patty Waits Alone, and it's a historical fiction story. Remember when we read The Storymaker's Candle and it took place during the Depression? Well, this is another story that takes place during the 1930s period, and it's based on a true story. The topic, or what the story is about, is a stray dog who is rescued. Some of the words you might you will see in this story include fate, which is a noun that means the development of events beyond one's control. Patiently, which is an adverb and describes a way that shows tolerance without becoming annoyed or anxious. And tragedy. Tragedy is a noun that means an event causing great suffering. So as we read, remember our focus is theme, and we're going to ask ourselves, what is the author trying to teach me? Let's get started. When I look at the cover, I want to think about what can I predict based on the title and the illustration. Well, the title is Patty Waits Alone. It sounds like this dog is going to be waiting for something, and he's waiting for something by himself. I see... It looks very dreary and gray in the illustration, and it looks like he's somewhere industrial, not at a park or a house where I might think of finding a dog. This is a chapter book, and the first chapter is called On the Wharf. A wharf is an area that is near a dock or a place where ships come in to unload their cargo. Chapter 2 is called A Wet Dog. Chapter 3 is called Patty's Story. Chapter 4, Patty is Taken. And Chapter 5, On Strike. This is the table of contents, and we will probably not get past Chapter 1 during this lesson. These are the characters. Remember, we can have main characters and minor characters. And in focusing on the theme, we want to practice the reading strategy, Think, Say, Do, which is where you read and think about what the characters think, say, or do in the text. You can also take a moment to imagine or act out what the characters think, say, or do. Which brings me to our other reading strategy, Picture. You can draw three columns for beginning, middle, and end, and make short sketches of what's happening in the story during the beginning, middle, and the end. And this helps you visualize what's happening in the story. So our characters are going to be Patty, 
who's a loyal dog that lives on the wharf, Jack Mountford, a night watchman who guards the wharf, Mr. Snell, Jack's boss on the wharf, a dog catcher, who's a man who catches stray dogs, and the workers, other men who work on and near the wharf. So if I were to make a prediction, I would think that Mr. Snell, Jack Montford, and Patty are probably the main characters, and the minor characters are going to be the dog catcher and the workers. Let's find out. Oh, I see some graphic features. I see we have a map. And we have a key that tells us what the different locations on the map of the town are. And we have a postcard that ha is on the side with a message. And it says, Dear Reader, the story of Patty is a true story. Back in the 1930s, there really was a dog named Patty who lived on the wharfs in Wellington, New Zealand. Today, if you visit Wellington, you can still find a memorial for Patty above a stone water bowl for dogs. John Parsons, who's the author. So number one is the wharf, where most of the story is gonna take place. Number two is where the night watchman's shed is. Number three is town hall, and number four is the dog pound. Chapter one, on the wharf. It was a dark night with a moon hidden behind thick clouds. A cold wind shivered around the wharf. Rain hissed on roofs, and dark waves slapped against each other. Ships creaked and groaned as they rose and fell with the sea. Yellow light spilled from the doorway of a shed at one end of the wharf. Inside, Jack Mountford huddled over a tiny coal stove to keep warm. A coffee pot steamed beside him. It was Jack's first night as night watchman guarding the wharf. Even though it was lonely and cold, he was glad to have work. Jobs were not easy to find during the Great Depression of the 1930s. I'm going to stop for a moment, and I'm going to think about how the beginning of the story often tells me where and when the story takes place. So I'm going to note that uh, the story takes place at a wharf on a dark rainy night and it's very cold and rainy. It also takes place in the 1930s, which is a time of the Great Depression when many people didn't have many jobs. And so far we've been introduced to one of the main characters, Jack, who is just beginning a job as a night watchman. Even though he's lonely and cold, Jack feels lucky to have a job at a time when not many people have jobs. Boys and girls, we're now on pages six and seven, and you're going to continue reading on your own from this point. You're going to finish reading the story. When you get to the end, you need to stop and think, what did you just read? This is even a good practice to do at the end of each chapter. You want to think about what was the story mostly about? Which events stand out in your mind? How did the characters change in the story? And what text evidence do you have that illustrates that characters learned something? You want to use your own words to describe what the author, what you think the author wants you to learn in the story. And look for those clues in the text that helped you figure out the story's theme. Once you are thinking about what you think the theme is, try to connect it to life. Because as we said before, a lot of the reason that many of us read is to feel connected to others. And authors have lessons that they're, or messages that they're trying to convey to us, which are about life. So if we can connect what happened to the character to a general occurrence in life, then that helps us formulate the theme.